One of the things that are super overlooked are SSH keys. How to push and pull to a Git repository using SSH. I remember when I first started, I was just like, it drives you crazy. You have to constantly search around, but typically, I, in this video, I want to show you how to actually connect to your private repos using SSH keys. You could do it with GitHub or Bitbucket. In this example, I'm going to be using GitHub. Guys, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to do it in two ways. One, we're going to create one from the clone something that we have remotely, push it on our local computer, uh, pull it on our local computer, and then push changes. And the second way, stay tuned because I'm going to show you the second step, which is if we start with making a, a repo locally on our computer, then we want to push it to our repo. So then we have to actually create a remote one, connect the repos, and then push. So it's two different ways. So stay tuned in this video. I'm going to show you how to do both. Guys, if you like front-end web development, full stack, Next.js, React, CSS, hit that like button and come join me on this journey. And let's just go. Right now, I have um, a basic, you know, this is a public repo, but this will work if it's private or public. So I just have like a, a sample repo, a repo that I'm going to be using. And, you know, right here, if you go to code, you can see the SSH. So here's the HTTPS, which we're not going to be bothering with. We're going to be using SSH. So how do we use SSH. Basically how it works is you have a private key and a public key created on your computer. And the private key is the real key, but the public key is like the doorway. So you basically create this public and private key on your computer and then on GitHub or on wherever you're going to put it, you give them the public key. So then when you when you connect, it basically listens for the public key on your computer and says, do you have the private key? And when you do, it says, OK, you got in and now you can come in. So we need to do two things. We need to create a key on our on our private computer. And then on the remote area, we have to actually add the key there so they can all talk to each other. So let me show you how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just clone this because this is a public repository. There shouldn't be a problem with that. So I will actually clone clone this um, and show you how that works. Now, if it's private, it won't let you clone it unless you have the key. But let's just do this part because we're going to do that a little later. So CD development, I'm going to go right in. I'm going to put this in my development folder. So git clone and you literally just copy and paste the SSH. I will paste it right here. Um, oops, I actually already did this. So I will actually just delete what I have and restart. All right, so let's try again. Git clone, do it. So there it goes. It's done. It it downloaded everything because it's a public repo. Anyone could have access to this, so there's no problem. But no one can push to this except me. Um, actually, let's go ahead. Let's try to push something. Let's say git. Let's let's go into that routes. All right, so we're in there. Let's go git push. And look what it says. Git denied um, here because you know you can't read from that remote repository, make sure you have the, you know, the access key. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an access key. So if you just search generate SSH key, you'll see it. Here's basically the default. You want to go into this area, um, which is basically the default. I'm on a Mac users Omar dot SSH. And if you don't have that, you can go to create that. And it's a it's a hidden uh, folder that stores all the keys. So you want to go into that folder. So we'll, and then CD dot SSH. There we are. So we're in the folder. OK, great. Now we're going to go paste that in SSH key. Now, I don't want to call it IDRSA because you probably already have one. And if you keep this name, it's going to write over the name. So you don't want to write over a key because you probably are using that key for something else. So I'm going to call this one GitHub UIW and I'm going to call it, you know, Mac mini for this. You can name it whatever you want. Um, I'm, and you could share these keys on multiple computers. So that's what's cool. If you copy and paste it, you can use the same one. You can enter passphrase. I don't want to bother with that because if you don't have the private key, I mean, you probably, you know, you're, it's fine. Um, but if someone were to steal the key off your computer, they may not know they may not have the password so that's helpful but so now we got the key and if you look here go to the ssh we have it right here okay so this is the key that we just created and it has the private one right here and this is the dot pub so now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and copy the key over now if you search for a copy ssh key there are different commands but the right one comes up from digital ocean and i i don't know why there's so many different commands but it's basically pb copy and this uh, on the mac at least and then you just go right into the dot pub so i just saved it 
you know, on my computer, I just saved it on the side. So I typed in the actual name, right? So if you want to change this to the name of your key, and now we have it. If I, it's in your clipboard once you click enter. And the way you can see that is if you just literally try to paste this over, I literally just pasted it right there and it's saved. Now what we want to do is go into your GitHub. We want to go into our private account. So the private, you know, into your profile, your settings. And then what you want to do is scroll down to SSH and GPG keys. So I have one already saved. So we're going to make a new one here, the one that we just created. Now give it a title. And I'm just going to paste the public key, not the private key. The private key never gets pasted anywhere. It stays on your computer. You only want the public key. I'm going to name this the same title just so I can reference it in the future. All right. And I'm going to paste it here so I know. I'll add the key. Um, got to write my password. So I have the key. It shows I haven't used it, right? Okay, cool. Now we have our key on our computer. We have our, our key on GitHub. Before you go ahead and start trying to connect, we want to tell our config folder that we want to use this key when we're connecting to GitHub. Okay, so right here, there's a config file. So you just want to go ahead and drag that over. I have one for WP Engine, so I'm going to make one just for the one we just created called GitHub. All right, so we're going to change this host URL to github.com. Keep the user to git. And now we're going to say preferred publication, preferred authentication public key is fine. And here I'm going to go ahead and say, I want you to use this key when I'm connecting to GitHub. So that's the identity key I want you to use. So GitHub, Git. So it's oh, so I don't have to keep typing in, hey, before you push, associate with this key. And I have to update this to github.com. It's very dangerous copying and pasting because it's very easy to miss things like this. So let's say so now we should be host, host name, git, git. So that should all be right. We're saying identity file come here. And just as a note, the, there already is a config file for every repo and it's a, a, associated. So I just drag that in and you could see here you can make changes to this. I like to keep my config file in the global area, but it has its own inside of Git, its own config. And you can see it has the remote origin. It's going to have other data here and things like that. Here is where you can change your username, um, which is kind of helpful. So what I'm going to do also before I do that, I'm going to change the username. So when it pushes, it pushes from the right username. So what you can do is do it per thing. And this is basically going to uh, this is going to basically create the, so it's going to change this config file if you actually put this command in. So we're going to say git config and you'll see this happening. Actually, let me delete this so I don't make any errors here. All right. So now it's going to basically change it to, let's say, Omar Baga, save it. So you saw that it made it, it populated it right there. And then when I go ahead and copy the next thing, it's basically creating the syntax for you. Um, but you can, you know, write that yourself. But uiworkspace.com and you're going to save it. So you see here, put the name and you could have just, I just wanted to make sure. So it's pretty straightforward. It's name, email and straightforward. So it's done and already saved. Now in the I commit, it shows this is the user as opposed to grabbing something from your global area, which is very common. You might be pushing something personally to your work. And that's just an extra step. You don't necessarily have to do. I believe it should work after we added our key. So let's say get, let's just see if it's not giving an error. Get push. Great. So now when we do git push, everything is up to date. Now that we it's trying, that means it's connecting. It's not giving us an error. The one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a subtle change just to see if I could commit something. So let's go back. I'm going to open up my, my folder. I'm going to make a change just so that I can commit something. So you know what? I'll just change some CSS just so um, we'll do like five. Let's change it to four just so that there's something there. All right. So now if we do git status, we can see that we have a modification. All right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and git add that. Git add. Then we're going to do git commit m and say, you know, CSS font size. And you definitely want to put some really good descriptions. I know as like a developer, we don't want to do that, but you really want to, it's going to help you remember what was there. So it got committed into our local repo. Now we want to push this. So let's try git push. And that's it. This is what I love about, you know, GitHub is really good with this is that this is going to be a little different if you set up your repo locally and then you make a remote one and then you connect them. There's a little extra step, but when you're cloning something, um, it's just git push. 
the one extra step if you were to add this to the remote origin would be it would ask you to set like an upstream which is just follow the prompts it'll tell you when you do get push it'll say oh you're missing this one thing it'll have you add one extra step is like set the upstream url and when you do that it get push will work from there on so that's it so now if we go to if i refresh if i go over here to my repo there it is so if you go to commits you can see the latest one right there um github is a little different than bitbucket um, bitbucket will list all the commits and which, which i kind of i like that about um bitbucket but now now i want to show you how to create something locally then push it connected so now let's do that so let's say we started off and we made you know a repo so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to create an empty repo so we're going to make um empty repo sorry let's push this into our vs code okay so now we have an empty repo let's just put like a readme.md all right just so we have something and let's make the actual local repo so we're going to say git init done that so now we have a repo well and again config but you can also just type here user you know i'm familiar with it now since we did it in the last one. email is going to be equals whatever this is just an extra step you don't have to do i just have multiple things going on on my computer so i always want to make sure i got the name so now what we're going to do is we can do git add git commit first commit now we're committed locally but this this repo is only local right now we want to get it on our github so now if we go to over here and i just go ahead and create a repo so we'll go plus new repository and i'm just going to name this empty repo and then i'm going to delete this later on empty repo could be public could be private i'll just make this private for now and then we're just going to go create repository so we're going to go ahead and save it cool so now we have a url it's all right here. We can send anyone to that repo. If it's private, they won't get access. What we want to do is we want to connect the remote to the local and then push. So what you want to do here is we've already created this locally. So now we're going to say git remote add origin and origin is going to basically be the origin URL, the remote URL. So now we're going to go over here. Let's move this up. And now we're going to say we're just going to paste that in. All right. So it's done. So now it's added, you have no error message. It's added the local repo and it says, hey, the remote origin is the one we just copied on, you know, from GitHub. Now, if we do git push, here's what I was telling you is that now this is the extra step that's going to say you have to set an upstream saying that now this is where the upstream URL you want to do. This doesn't happen for Bitbucket. It's more particular for GitHub. So you're going to copy and paste that once and then, if, and then you never have to do that again for the repo. Done. It's actually set the repo. Now if we just do git push, it's going to send everything. Oh, that actually looks like it already pushed it. So the set upstream actually did it all in one step. But I want to show you if you make another change, another change, you'll see here and I save this. If I do git add, git commit m second commit or whatever just because just for the sake of testing i want to show you this now we've done a second now if we just do git push from here on out it actually just pushes you don't have to do the set upstream now if we go back to our repo hit a refresh and you're going to see everything there we actually have everything right there if you go to the commits you'll see that there's two commits nothing really is in there if you go to the repo it's just like an empty readme and that's it so i just want to show you how to actually do that. Um, I know when I first started, this was super difficult. So I hope you guys like it. I'll see you guys next video.